Well, Tempe, uh, Marion and Anna, thank you so much for speaking to us about your grandfather. Richard Gavin Gardner Casey was 24 years old when he signed up for the Australian Imperial Force. What do you think was behind his reasoning for doing that? It was an opportunity for something he could do and he did it, just went off to do it. He was in a position to so he just went. I'm not sure when he exactly signed up, he was certainly on that first convoy back in 1914. Tempe, th that first crew of men, what do you think was going through their minds at that point? Possibly um, a sense of duty and patriotism and a sense of adventure. I mean, I imagine a lot of people would never get out of Australia otherwise, or, you know, go abroad if they didn't go to war. And it was their opportunity to, yeah, to break out of the mould, get, get away from home. Like uh, all of them went to Egypt first and then uh, was part of that Gallipoli landing. Has he ever spoken much about that time? I think we started talking about the Salvation Army and he said that the Salvation Army were the only people who went to the front line. And then he said, in France. And he seemed to go right into himself and slumped and he really slumped. He was in there and I got a real sense of him having gone right back there. Then he picked himself up and talked more factually. And I got an incredible sense of despair in those couple of seconds. The Salvation Army would deliver their care packages because everyone else would stop. Oh, they're at the front line, they don't get their care package. Mm. The Salvation Army people would take the care packages right to the front line. And it still mattered to him mm. all those years later. It says a lot, doesn't it, that, that the little information that he shared with with you yeah. was about the people who showed them comfort and care. Yes, yes. I wonder um, if you wouldn't mind, we have uh, the biography about your grandfather. Yeah. Uh, Marion, perhaps if you wouldn't mind reading this passage here. <laughs> the General was out with Colonel White and I about half past nine this morning. We had to go up a rather bad bit of gully as the Turks hold the head of it with a small party and have been doing some fairly regular sniping from concealed positions lately. A good number of bullets came through the bushes and onto the track, but thinking it was nothing more than the usual wild firing and unaimed shots, we went on, taking as much cover as was possible. We got to a corner where the track went around and where there was a small field dressing station for casualties from the fire trenches and were warned that the sniping was particularly hot just there. However, we made a dash and before five yards, the general was down and bleeding rather badly from the thigh. We got him back to the beach on a stretcher at once and took him to the hospital ship, Gascon. It's very matter of fact, yeah, isn't it? Is, it, it, is. it and, and even the, the line about um, the bullets coming in yes. just another, another day, really. Well, it's quite interesting because, in fact, uh, if you read on in that particular passage, uh, he apparently warned uh, Bridges daily of the need to duck and dive for cover and things like this, and Bridges often ignored him. And this particular day, he didn't ignore him and got hit. <laughs> I just thought, there's a terrible irony in that. <laughs> he, he rose to the ranks becoming a, a major um, during his time in uh, World War I. And then uh, the war ended, he, he came back to Australia and entered a life of politics. Do you think that the two are, are linked, his time serving the country in war and, and later as a politician? His father was a I politician. I think there were opportunities. I mean, there was a history of it, mm. his mother's family were politicians as well so I think there was a sort of partly the noblesse oblige thing but also I think it was a, a bit of a family thing you did it was what do you do with your life what's a meaningful thing a substantive thing to do with your life and I suppose in that classic you know whether it's you know the Dada movement or whether it's a man going into politics I think the wars carnage and senselessness and, and meaninglessness and how that affected your psyche I think it probably would make you feel I have to do something of substance. I have to do something that means something. Yeah. Otherwise, all of that was what's, for what's nothing. The point? What's the point? He really was an incredible man and, did, and, as I said, did so much for this country. I'm after what kind of man you think he was? He was essentially a man who did a job. He was educated and raised to work hard and to do the right thing and to behave in an honourable way. He may not have been a man of extraordinary vision or a man of extraordinary leadership qualities, but I think he was somebody who, 
who represented our country in a way that reflect reflects our some of our very good qualities, bringing all of us forward equally rather than one particular section of society ahead of the others. Australia at that time, we were establishing our own identity. And yes, there was the Larrikin soldiers. There was also the person that grandfather reflected was that definitely independent. We are who we are, I am who I am, and I am an Australian. And he was very Australian. Well, there was a side of him which I remember most, which was the most, was that he was a very warm and loving person and warm and loving grandfather to us all. And that was a side that maybe other people didn't see. A truly remarkable man. Thank you so much, Anna, Marion and Tempe, for sharing your experiences of your grandfather. Pleasure. 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 Pleasure.